So we're into our Fusion workspace, which is great. And we're going to have a crack at generating some of our base freeform shapes. As per the usual, um, always good to start a new component before we get cracking. And you can see in the menu here with our solid um, uh, drop down here um, that we've got you know our shapes we were playing with last week so our, our we would sketch and then we would then generate a feature from that sketch okay um, just a note I've seen some people have been getting confused and ending up in surfacing um, when they're trying to do parametric modeling not where you want to be you want to be modeling solid objects so a surface object you have a surface but it has no dimension to it whatsoever it makes it really tricky downstream so make sure when you're doing parametric stuff stick within your solid workspace okay now to go to free form um, we can see create form at the end here also if you drop down create and go create form and we can see it all shifts all right so we can see some of our preset shapes here. We've also got our modifier tab, which is common between um, parametric and freeforming. The tools are slightly different, but again, that's where we access all those you know, interesting tools that can change and help us make essentially modifications. Um, symmetry, as per last, we've also got some utilities. Repair body, um, some of these are useful if you've got things that aren't working. Um, I find that bridge uh, it tends to be difficult um, at times and the bridge will fall over. In that utility, that one can help you figure out what's going on. Um, you've also got same options with your offset planes and things like that. They're consistent um, as are the others. So if we come in here and have a look, we've got a bunch of preset shapes that we can make. Okay, We've also got a plane and a face, which is as I was saying before, they're, they're, they start as flat objects. Okay. Um, and we also have extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft. Okay, those guys work similarly when we're parametric modeling off a sketch. Okay, and you can see that you can do a sketch to start. So we still have that parametric workspace available to us. Okay, we can still draw and get objects out. Okay, but um, we can also just start with these base objects. So first cap off the rank, let's just start with the box. Okay and I'm gonna drop the box on our origin. And notice how when I made that, it um, started the box from the center of the box. So we're starting on the origin, I've got a nice symmetrical build, uh, which is always good. So I've got my box here, and there's a couple of key things to notice. Obviously, I can adjust the size of the box um, with the pulls, and we can see them changing over here as I pull it, all right? But the other thing we need to note is that we have got these sliders here now, okay? And by pulling these sliders, you can see that I can add or subtract the number of faces in that direction, okay? And this is really important for your workflow going forward because if you start to generate some really um, sort of, I suppose you could say high definition shapes, in terms you've got lots of faces, then your modeling style will have to change as a result of that, okay? So, I'm gonna start by making some really quite low, you can see if we go all the way to that, we end up with essentially a quad ball. Um, so let's go with two sets of faces, okay? Which essentially ends up as four. So, Got our shape. Um, again, we had those choices. We can make it symmetrical, we can make them new bodies, etc. Okay, and we start and we have this guy here. Just for reference, I'm going to create a second box next to it. Okay, and this guy, make it roughly the same size, but we're going to give us lots of faces on this. Okay. So we have a point of reference. So obviously they're both representing quite differently straight away. Okay. But now if I come into here, you can see that as I hover over, it's immediately picking up with these two objects. It's picking up on the faces 
or the edges or what we call the vertexes. So this is a face, this is an edge, this is a vertex. Okay, so the vertex is the corner of two edges and the edges, when they bound, when they're joined together, they make up a face. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So now that I've got that shape and I go, all right, I want to modify it. Okay. Easiest way to get into the modifying menu is just to right click and come to edit form. You can also come in, modify edit form here. Okay. So if I drop in and I go edit form, this is where all the magic happens or the pain, depending on how you feel about it. Okay. So we have the T-spline entity. We can see that's highlighted at the moment. So that's essentially telling us that it's engaged and it wants us to select something. We then have transform mode, okay? And we have a different couple of different ways that we can um, essentially, these are our, our options for modification. And then we have our coordinate space and then our filter, okay? So at the moment, it's set to all. So essentially, it's kind of smart. It's going, okay, well, if you hover over vertex, then I will give the option. Or if I, you hover over the edge, I'll give you that option. If we switch it to this, you can see it's only showing me the vertexes that I can grab. And from edges, it's only letting me select edges. Okay? This sort of stuff, useful when you're working, again, with lots and bits of pieces and you're trying to grab multiples at a go. So there's three ways essentially that I can edit this shape. I can edit it either by selecting the faces or by selecting the edges or by selecting the vertexes. So let's have a go first with um, just modifying a face. So I'm just going to grab this one. I'm just going to pull it up. Okay. And you can see how I've deformed the shape really quickly. Okay. Now, this is where the power of this really comes in compared to parametric modeling where, you know, you would draw a shape and then you would extrude that shape and then you, maybe you would cut something out of that shape or you'd add another extrusion to it or you'd loft off it, maybe you'd fill it. Here essentially you have a base shape that you set up or multiple base shapes that you start to put in and then it's just about grabbing and pulling and pushing around to get things roughly where you want them to be. Okay. Um, just another note, I find that stability-wise in freeform, when you're doing these sorts of modifications, at least on my computer, um, using the like um, command Z um, to undo tends to cause crashes more often than not. I find that using um, the step undo up here, or if you hold control and drag left, it'll give you a step undo, um, tends to work. Uh, a bit more resolutely, it's a bit more sort of, um, I lost the word, uh, it's just a, it's a bit more um, structured, it doesn't crash, okay? So anyway, we're back in here, we're modifying, there's a few other things that I can do, so I can move in space, okay, with the arrows, so that's great, Robust is the word I was looking for. It's much more robust as opposed to using the keyboard shortcuts where it, um, it can crash it. So, I can use those to move in space. These guys are let me to move, allow me to move in space on the plane. So we can see that that's a plane, that's a plane, that's a plane. That essentially allows me to expand and contract in all um, three dimensions. This guy essentially lets me do the same thing, but in two dimensions, or essentially dimensions of that plane. So you can see there's ones for each, and then modifying in different ways. And then these guys, let me expand and contract again in the directions. You can also rotate, okay? And you can see that these are letting me rotate. On the plane. So instantly you can see, wow, all right, there's quite a lot of control. There's a huge amount of control which is offered to you um, in this type of modeling. 
and that is just one face that we have just modified, okay, that's letting us do all of that. Um, if we were to grab vertexes, and in this case I'll grab two, so I hold shift and grab those two vertexes, and I pull up, you can see that you're not limited to just one thing, I can select as many bits and pieces as I want, and I can make those modifications, okay? And I still have the option to be able to scale in and out. So in this case, you can see I'm pinching them together. I'm spreading them. So, huge amount of control which is offered to us. And as you can see, instantly you get really interesting, um, much more organic topography. Okay, you, you model and end up with a much more organic result. Uh, another nice thing is if I click on a face, let's call it this one, and I hold the option key, and this isn't just limited to faces, you can do this for edges or vertex as well. If I hold the option key and drag, it automatically creates a new whatever you were selected on. So in this case, I've created a new face off the face where I was. That face essentially has tried to stay where it was. Obviously, it's been um, dragged up a bit as part of this morphing process, but I've actually created a new face and I can just keep on doing that. Find my option key. Just dragging up and up and up. Okay. Now, coming back to this guy over here and why I want these two examples next to each other is so, say I go, all right, I'm going to make the same thing. Um, now, how I made it last time was I grabbed my two vertexes. Cool, got them. And if I drag those up, which is what I did in the last one, you can see how different the result is instantly, okay? Because essentially, I'm only pulling from these two points, okay? And so the effects are localized as closely as possible around there, okay? These points, they're not, I'm not, um, grabbing them directly, so they're going to try and stay where they are as much as they can. This is sort of where all the magic of um, the uh, T-splines comes into effect, because obviously some of this moves a little bit, but for the most part everything's trying to stay where it is. So you can see how I've used the same process, but I've ended up with two very different results. Okay, ignoring this part here. Um, the other thing you have to understand is if you have a huge amount of content, a huge amount of detail there at the start, it's obviously going to mean that you're going to end up with a really high workload in terms of trying to get where you want to go in terms of shaping. So the golden rule with Freeform, it's got to make your computer like you a lot better as well, is start simple. Start with the minimum number of faces you can, okay, within reason, and add them as you need them. And as I showed you just before, you can add them quite easily, okay? Don't go, oh, I'm making a complicated shape, so I need to get all these faces in now. It's just going to make your life so much more difficult later down the track.